Hey, what's up everyone? Chip Walters here. And uh, today I want to uh, talk a little bit about workflow. And uh, in particular, my workflow. A lot of we've got some, uh, maybe some comments and even complaints that uh, I go kind of fast and I don't really show what's going on all the time. So I want to talk about some of the shortcuts I use, kind of how I build things. So, uh, first off, I'm going to talk a little bit about where I store these shortcuts. So as you guys, uh, I'm on a Mac, most of you are probably on a Mac or a PC. A couple of you might be on Linux, but if you go to a Mac, uh, I'll show you where it gets started. Stored. I'm not sure exactly where it gets stored on a PC, but I assume it's probably pretty near the, uh, the, the it's stored in a file called moi.ne, moi.ne or moi.ne, uh, and it may be in the actual same folder as the actual application, but I don't really know. But uh, on the Mac, here it is, here's the app, and to get to it, you have to right click and say show package contents. <coughs> Sorry about my cough, but I've got a little bit of cough. I'll probably hack it away during this, try to keep it down to a minimum. But here we have uh, this WineSkip app. So what this means is that this app is originally written for Windows, and WineSkip allows it, is a, a, a wrapper that allows it to, a Windows app to run inside of a Mac. So that's what that is. So uh, we're in, uh, this is the drive C, so that's the C drive. And if you go in the C drive, you've got these folders, and in the, MOI folder, MOI folder, you'll find in here this MOI.ini file. I'll share you mine with it online. Uh, I'll have a, a link to it at the end of this, but uh, let's take a quick look at it, and uh, you'll see that uh, it's it's got in it all of the all of the things that I do. Like for instance, here's the uh, uh, where's oh, no one's gonna license stuff uh, mesh export. Um, here are the recent files that I've actually, you know, when you click on the recent files list, this is where it gets it from right here. It's where it stores it. Um, and, uh, and then here are the shortcut keys. So in here are all my shortcut keys that I use. We're going to talk about some of these. Uh, and some of these uh, I use a lot. And some of them I, I rarely use. So just FYI. Uh, anyway, this is the folder, the file, and this is the way it looks. You really aren't going to have to mess with this, but you just need to know where it is. If you want to replace your mo mod at any, then with mine you can do that. If not, then you may have to be able to open up my mod at any file and uh, and actually cut and paste into yours. And you can do that fairly simply by just creating new lines in the shortcut keys, you know, there. So, uh, or you can copy, basically, you can copy the scripts. Uh, from here directly into the uh, actual Moe app. So let's quit brackets and let's move this out of here. So that's that's where that goes. So uh, unfortunately, uh, I'll, I'll have to hand code some of these keys. But uh, if I hit Shift A, Shift A, that resets the, the 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 view. It's the same thing as hitting this reset button here. So um, that's what Shift A does. So uh, and Shift A is great because what it does is if I have a, let's say I have this as a rectangle and let's extrude it. I'm going to hit the E key for extrude. I've got that, that set up. So, and we move it over here and then we, you know, option drag, let's click it, hold the option key and drag, hold the control key, I'm sorry, and drag around. You can see you can drag copies off. Now, if I want to zoom, zoom in on all of this, I just hit, if I select one, shift A, I'm in on this one. And then I actually can rotate this object around its center. The view will actually rotate around its center. If I click out and I hit the same, I hit the same thing, uh, uh, which is the reset view button. Now it's going to go uh, about all of them. So if nothing is selected, it'll put everything in in the view. So that's good to know. So I have that set to Shift A. So if I'm ever selected anything, I can just zoom in on it. And then if I select off of it, I zoom back out. So that's Shift. That's the Shift A key that I have set to zoom. Uh, if you look at options, you know we'll look at uh, here are the uh, here are my my shortcuts. But if we go right down to the shift shift A is view reset all, so you can see that's what that does. So uh, that's shift A. So uh, it's one of the ones that gets as you can imagine get used a lot. As I mentioned before, as you just saw earlier, uh, I always keep my straight snap and my object snap on. I very rarely use grid snap. I have shortcut keys for these. I find out I very rarely use these because if I want, for instance, if I'm trying to snap and I don't want to move this just a little bit up and it won't snap, I can hold the command key down and I can now it's not snapping to anything. So when I'm dragging the command key down, 
it overrides any snap settings and you're just free to go wherever you want, which is nice, which is something that a program like SketchUp doesn't have, which people would like. But but once you, you know, now, now once you're here, now we're, we're set on an object, and it'll snap to the object, midpoints of objects, endpoints of objects, you know, anywhere you want to go. So uh, the other thing that's kind of cool are, the, are these, you know, the, there's this thing called a, uh, uh, different different programs have different ways of, of using a manipulation tool, uh, like a transform tool. Uh, and uh, what Mike, Michael's done, which is pretty cool, is it? he says, well, if you want to move it right or left, just drag it and move it, right? So you can just drag it. And notice that because I've got the, the straight snap on, when I'm dragging it, it's going to show me in my in this view up here, it's going to show me the direction I'm dragging it, which is really nice. So I'm just clicking and dragging is all I'm doing here. Clicking and dragging over here too. So uh, now I can also rotate it by this little arrow right here. I can rotate it. But sometimes as you rotate things, I'm going to undo. I hit the Command Z to undo. Sometimes when you rotate, it's going to try and snap to things. So again, if you hold the Command key down, you can tweak it. But what happens if you want to rotate it and you want it to be a specific number, right? So that's a little more difficult, uh, and the way I typically do that is with the rotate command, transform, rotate. But I have a shortcut key. I've mapped that to the Y key. So I hit Y. Now I can click on the center of it. I can click over here, and I can be start rotating. If I want to go 45 degrees, I just go down here, type in 45, and now I'm 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 snapping the increments of 45 degrees. I could also have typed it up here as well. But sometimes, in particular, like if I want to go back 45, I not may not want to do the math, 360 minus 45 is 315, obviously, but sometimes I want to go 12 degrees back, I'm, I'm just, it's a little more difficult to do the math, so I'll just type, I'll just use this little snap setting down here to do that. And the same thing is true if I want to move things, if I want to move things exactly one inch, you can see this D key down here, down in here changing, but you'll find out that that's kind of difficult, so I'll use the move key, and I've, and I've mapped that to the T, T for transform. And by the way, these keys are the same keys. I've, I've typically used keys that I learned a long time ago in Lightwave. Uh, and so I've mapped both Lightwave, Lightwave uh, as well as SketchUp to all these same keys. So that way when I'm in those programs, I don't have to remember how to move or rotate, translate or rotate things. So here we have uh, uh, our, our, this is our box ready to ready to be translated. Let's, let's click out again. Hold on. So select it, hit the T key for translate. Now, if I want to move it like 0.2, I can come down here and say 0.2. Okay, go back in here, and now you see it's it's actually locked in 0.2 in the direction I'm going. So there. So now I've got it uh, moved to 0.2. So that's how I would use move things in specific increments. Um, uh, again, another interesting thing is that if I'm rotating, let's say I want to rotate this. I can hold down the control key as I rotate, and I'm going to get another version, which is really nice. So uh, let me show you what, why that's kind of cool. I'm going to select these, and remember that if you select from the top to the left, you got to get all the way through them. But if you select this way, you just got to touch them, right? So meaning to select the objects, if you top right to bottom, top left to bottom right, it, you have to select the entire objects before they're selected. From top right to bottom left, it's just a you just have to touch them. So if I just want, if I just touch that one, I've got that one. So I can hit the delete key, to hit the delete key, hit the delete key, shift A again, and it resets my view. So what's really uh, kind of interesting is that I'm going to take this uh, about some of these this thing I just mentioned. Is I can take this some of these cool cool tools that Michael's got built into here. I'm going to take this circle tool and I'm going to drag out a circle here, and now I've got it. I've got it uh, set up, and so. I want to put two different circles. I'm going to I'm going to actually put a button in here, and I want to put a little relief around it. Let's say so. In this case, I can with this when you click here. Don't forget that if you toggle this, on one hand you're moving it, you're resizing it down to the to the uh, to, to to the corner. On the other hand, you're you're doing it around the middle, right? So I'm going to with with this center, this pivot point in the middle. I'm going to hold the control key down, right? And then I've got this. Uh, this uh, circle, but but notice that the circle is kind of getting flat and everything. I want to force it to stay a circle. So then I switch over now to the command key, and once the command key is done, uh, now I'm going to be forcing a perfect circle, and I can and all the snaps are off, and I'll just put a little relief, a little even larger relief than normal. But you'll see right there. So we've got that. So now I've got 
two different uh, uh, two different uh, objects, and I can say e e for extrude. So I'm going to drag it drag it down here, and notice I can't see through this. So I'm going to escape, hit the escape key to get out of that. I want to see that, so I'm going to click on uh, I'm going to use what I call my tilde key, which is going to show the hidden line. So if you look up here, by the way, I'll show you one more key before I do anything else. The space bar is a great, this is a, another great shortcut, and it's not built into MOI, but there's a good shortcut for it. Spacebar, whatever view you're in, see I'm in the right view right here, if it's right, right, it just toggles that. So if I'm in this view here, the 3D, I hit the spacebar, bam, I'm in the 3D view, and I hit the spacebar again, now I'm back to 4. So I can toggle back and forth between these these views really quickly by hitting the spacebar. So, so uh, uh, back to the tilde key. So if you can look, you'll see there is a hidden line back here, and I, when I tap the tilde key, it's gone, now it's there, now it's gone. So that's what the tilde key does for me, is it allows me to view those hidden lines. In the case of, of selecting these two curves and dropping uh, circles and extruding them, it's kind of nice to be able to see, you can now see that hidden line, see how far I'm extruding it down, which is great. Now I've got that extruded, I've got these selected, which I don't want to hit the delete key, which removes those. And now I can say, there's my, my, uh, uh, my original cube, and I can boolean, so I go to boolean. So I've had to subtract and done. I'm sorry. So the boolean key is B. Uh, so now I have. You can see I've got this uh, been bo that, that was booleaned out of there. Now it's a simple matter to you know add a fillet on there. So let's go into here. We're going to click on that and say give me a fillet uh, and a F F. I use the F key for fillet, and I can draw out a little little thing. And now I've got a fillet, a nice fillet there. So and then I'm going to I'm going to say. Uh, right, done, and then I'm going to grab, uh, hit the F key again, click twice to get this edge highlighted, hit the F key again, and we'll have another fillet on the outside. This time I'll make it point 0.1, and we have a little nice little note. Now, this is kind of cool, except for one thing. If you noticed, uh, this is all one object. It's all over, up here, it says solid, because it's the size. <laughs> so this is all just one object, one, one solid object. I really want that button to be a different object. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit. Uh, Command Z, and I'll just keep hitting Command Z until I'm all the way back out, and I only have one cylinder, one circle. So <coughs> now I'm going to take, and I'm going to click on this and drag it straight up. And as long as this line is on, my little line is on, I'm, I'm good. I know I'm straight up. So I know I'm straight up, and then I'm going to say, hit the E key for extrude, and I'm going to drag straight down. I can still see through because I have my show hidden lines, which is my tilde key. Right there's off on. Okay, so now I've got that. I'm going to hit the delete key. Now I've got the same, the same thing, but this time what I want to do is I want to actually create a two separate objects. So I'll take this surface and I'll go into uh, my offset button and I'm going to say shell. And I'm going to give it a thickness of, let's say, oh, let's just go about that far right there, 0.16. So now you can see this change color. So that's it. If I flip it, that means it's on the outside. I go normal. It's on the inside, so I want it. I want that to be on the inside of this particular case. So I say done. So now I have basically a cylinder that's hollow. If I drill the hole through it, which I can probably do pretty fast. There you go. Take this, and we'll hit the E key, extrude, delete, select this, boolean, hit the B key to boolean, select the middle, delete it, uh, and now I'm going to show you another key. I'm going to select this. I'm going to hit the I key. I is for isolate. So when I hit the I key, it isolates just anything that's been selected. So now as, as we look at this, we can see that inside this is a hollow object, right? Cool. So, so I'm going to hit the I key again, bring it back out. I'm going to undo, uh, undo a few things that I've done. Okay, then hit there. Uh, and uh, sometimes the I key gets confused. So I'm going to turn it back on. Shift A gets, oh, Shift A will get everything selected. So now I've got this. This, I can still see, you can still see in here that we've got the thickness. So I'll take this object and say Boolean, and I'm going to take this object and delete it. So now uh, I, I have an object that, again, I've got two different objects now in here. So I've just Booleaned out the two different objects. Uh, and I can take this one and let's just add it, give it a different color. Let's say red. Okay, and then click on red and fill it in, and let's make it. One, there we go, something like that, All right? Point two. Okay, there you go. And then, and then I can select this one, and right click will 
will do the same thing as remember the last thing I did. So if I click the right button, right click, I'm going to get the exact last thing I did. This one I'll make the point one, and there we go. So that's kind of a cool thing. Now I'm going to turn off hidden lines. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to show another uh, thing, and that is my W key. So if I hit the W key, I should I just show the wireframe. W toggles back on and off the wireframe. Shift W now turns off the wires, right? So now I'm just seeing only just the solid objects, right? So, and again, it toggles. So the other thing I can do is, <clears throat> is I can select one object and I can hit the A key and that's going to ghost the object. I don't know if you can see, but there's a dotted line that ghosted that. So it's still there. I can't select it, but I can see it. And sometimes it's nice to be able to ghost, to be able to ghost the object to be able to see. So that's all, that's all cool. So, uh, um, now another thing that that uh, I find is uh, really helpful is the merge tool. So the merge tool is really good for doing other kinds of things. Let's take a a, a rectangle and I'm going to put it in the side here. Let's turn on. Let's do it like this. And actually, let's take it and hit the I key, isolate it. I'm going to grab another circle. And we'll move that here. And now remember that. Uh, actually, uh, and uh, let's put it, yeah, remember that those Boolean keys, the Boolean commands, they also work. If I do an intersection here, actually, oops, if I do a, a, a union here, they also work uh, on 2D curves. So one of the things that, that I like, Shift A zooms all the way up. One of the things I like to do is I've mapped uh, my Boolean difference to B. But my U key is mapped to union, right? And then I can hit the fillet key, right click to select all, and I've got a nice little surface there, a little blue surface. So I'm going to take that now and I'm going to go back out of I, I, Shift A. So now I've got that. So I've got this sitting here and I want to move it up. So sometimes when I move it up, I might get lost. I might be, and I'm really worried I want to make it straight. So I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to, uh, uh, I want to move it to the center of this. So um, I'll hit the uh, T key, and the T key is the move T, right? It's a transform move. And what I'll do is I'll click here, hold the mouse button down, and get over here. Now I've got a center point here, and I can uh, click here. Oops, let's just zoom up on this in the middle of this. I can click here, and I'm drawing an ad. Uh, so now you can see I've got this. I can move all the way over, and I'll say intersection perpendicular. And now I know I'm right in the middle. So there you go. So then I want to actually move it straight up. And while I'm in, since I know I just used T key, I'll click anywhere out here, and I can move move it up with using the T key. Okay. And now, now uh, I don't need to move it up. I could have left it in the middle, but this might might be easier to show. Although if you see it, it's it's wrong place here. So this isn't the front view. I want the back view. So how do I do that? Well, with my cursor over over this area, I hit the one key. The one will always toggle whatever view you're in. If I'm in front, it'll go to back and then back to front. I'm up top, bottom, back to bottom. Right, left, uh, doesn't do anything in 3D. But, so this will basically gives you a way to toggle the views really quickly. So now I'm here. I can select this and I can select this and I can say Boolean, uh, construct Boolean and merge. And the merge is going to give me, uh, it's kind of like a Boolean but it does a union and intersection and a subtraction all at once. So there's nothing, it doesn't lose anything. So I've got two objects here. So what's great about merge is that once I've got it selected, remember this thing, right? So this is a good example. I'm going to zoom up on here and I can move it. I can move them in. If I want to move them in a little bit, I can, but if I want to move them, in, let's say I want to move them just a little bit farther than this, I may find that at some point I end up getting to where I, I just can't control it this way. So I'm going to basically, here's where I use the scale 1D key. So if a transform, you have scale, you have scale 2D, 1D. And I've mapped that just to H because I use that all the time. So what you do is with the object selected, center, so you can see now in the perspective view, you can see how it's actually moving in and out. So, and I do that, it should, it should have scaled it perfectly on both. Now once I have them done, I'm going to turn off, I'm going to turn off my uh, hidden lines. I'll select both of those and I use the U key for a Boolean union. There, now it's all one piece. 
Uh, actually, let's do this differently. Undo. I want to show you another way of doing this. Okay, so let's take this and let's go. Uh, let's turn it off. Show, let's show the hidden, the hidden lines here. And I'm going to say the H key again, but this time I only want to scale from one direction. So I'm going to go out here, and notice I'm scaling in this direction, but it doesn't scale from this direction. That's because I clicked first over here. I could have also done the same thing, right, by clicking the corner handle once and dragging in. That does the same thing. So, you know, notice it does the same. Now when I take this, this object, I hit the, hit the tilde key again to hide the hide the graphics. I've taken both. I hit the U for union and notice that now I've got just this one object. I can select this face, hit the F for fillet, and give me a little tiny fillet here. And you'll see that I have a nice fillet. Done. And then I take this and now I want to go select all these. Now that's kind of a pain, but I have a way of selecting them all at once. And that's the shift and the right, uh, right, the end closed bracket. So it's the, 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 not the left bracket, but the right bracket to close. If I hit the shift and that, it selects them all at once. So that's a nice little shortcut. Once that's done, I can again hit fill it and we're done. And so let's go to here, zoom out, shift A to zoom out. And then we're just going to basically, you know, remember I showed you the, the, the shift W so I can see the shift W so you can see this. Now the other thing I have is I have some interesting lighting in here. Like there's oil slick, car body, you know, there's different different kinds of lighting you can use. Those lightings should be set up in my moe.ini file, uh, but the problem is getting to them. So this stuff down here, all these, this is uh, Max Bernoff's, uh set of toolkits. You'll have to look online for that uh, on the in the form uh, on how to install that. It's a, it's, you know, I may do a tutorial on that someday, but right now it's uh, not really part of this tutorial. So. Uh, Okay, so that's that's uh, uh, that's those. So let's talk. Let's talk about a couple other things. One is exporting. So, a lot of times, if I want to export this to let's let's uh, like to Adobe Illustrator is a good example. You, what you really want is you want Illustrator to open to export, uh, and I'll select everything and I do Command Shift P, which is PDF, or Command Shift I, which is Illustrator. I've actually found that P works a little better. I've seen the Illustrator one sometimes not work well. So I typically start with P. So this says projection view. I want the 3D view. I have not, uh, the, the color is not right here because I haven't mapped that correctly in my any file. I'll talk to that at some other point. Fit to page <coughs> or preserve units. Sometimes, like when I print out a full scale plot of something, I'll use the preserve units, but in, a, in an orthographic mode. But I'll use fit to page here, <coughs> and we say OK. And now up here it says generating hidden lines, we're at 1%. So once we're done with that, now it's copied to the clipboard, and I can just go down to Adobe Illustrator, say File, New, and say OK, and Command V. And you can see that, that there is our there's our object right there. So it's kind of nice. So it's, it's actually really nice. That's a that's a you know that's that those are vectors. Those are not it's not raster. You can zoom way in on this thing. Zoom in here a little bit. You'll see how tight this thing holds up. So that's a yeah that's total total vector. So that's that's how I export to Illustrator, and then. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, I want to do, I think it's Shift P I use for grabbing a, a ping. So let's go into Downloads, Untitled Ping, Save. I use Downloads. So let's take a look at that. So there's our, so there's our image there. That's that's the Shift P. That's a whatever views you're currently in is what you're going to render out on that. That's just a a, a ping image, but it's. A, very useful. So, um, what other things? So, oh, talk about. Let's talk a little bit about polylines. So, oops, close. Uh, so, I use the P for polyline, and I can draw, you know, however I want out of that, right? So that's that's a and then F fill it, so you can see it done. So that's a polyline. Uh, 
pongling tool. <coughs> I might want to, like, for instance, take a, a rectangle and, you know, add that to the, you know, to it in some way, like snap to this end. Maybe use this as a trim piece for this. If I take this and move it over here, move these together, you'll find out that if I try and boolean these things, like intersect them or something like that, or even trim, shift T, shift T, by the way, is what I use for trim, you'll see that they don't intersect. And the reason why is because they're, as you can see, they're on, they're not, they're, they don't intersect up here. So the way to do that, to deal with that, is you just, while they're selected, you can see that there's these little handles over here. And you can drag them, and once it gets to flat, that word flat pops up, and now, okay, I'll hit the I key so I can isolate them. Now they are. So now I can say Shift T, and then just delete, delete what it is that you want, and then hit the J key for join. Command J set it for separate. I don't use that very often. One is what I do with all my drawing curves. So usually I have curves that I have that I, I want to use as references, but are not part of the model. I will just go in and I'll assign them the red color. Then I'll turn on red and uh, turn it off. So let's turn it back on. Let's, let's, that's why I never saw anything red. <laughs> but, so there you go. So now all my curves are always going to be in my red channel. So if I know if I can turn on red, okay, there we go. So that's one. Another thing is the minus key. The minus key will hide whatever you select. So and then you have to go back in and turn it back on. But that's what the minus key does. So if you have little things that you know you don't want, you just shift A, zoom all, uh, uh, minus key will actually will actually hide it. Another one is if I turn on here, uh, you know, uh, Command R is is like reshape. So it's there's your points. So you can you know reshape with Command R. And uh, again, I select this whole the whole object and hit the minus key, and now it's hidden again. So uh, another nice one is if I have an object and I say this is a say box. Okay, so I've got box and I have box and I want this to be part of the box group. So I select both of them. If, as long as this one doesn't have, it's already unnamed. I can select both of them in any order I want. Hit F6 and now now if we look at both of them in the box group. So uh, that's, uh, uh, that's real nice. Of course, uh, when you save your object, um, Place is untitled. Um, what I like to do is as I'm working and I add something or delete something, let's grab a line, grab here. Okay, so, uh, so say Boolean, subtract, click this, delete, delete, and now I've got this surface. So if I want to save this, Shift S saves an incremental version. So if I look at my downloads, this was the first one I saved here is uh, the second one. It's, an it's, an, it's going to give me an incremental version. Uh, the reason why it's 20 is because there are a whole bunch of downloads named named here. So you can see that. So let's just grab all of these untitled. So delete those. Let's do it again. So if I go into here and say uh, save, you'll notice it over here. We have untitled 20. That's the number that it's saved at. Okay, and then if I go in and say Shift S, let's move it around a little bit, Shift S, and now we'll see it's uh, 21. So this is a way, even though we don't have <clears throat> uh, full parametric uh, capabilities, this is how I do it. I, I'll basically have 50, 60 different versions of an, a model that I'm building. As I, and I just, if I have to go back and pull something out, I can. So it's a real nice, and it means that I, you don't have to save every little possible step that you do uh, in, an, in the actual file you're working on. So that's that's valuable. Uh, another thing is, let's go to here, uh, let's take this and isolate it. I for isolation, Shift A to select it and move it around. So if I want to take like this point, this point, and this point, I hit that top button and I can just drag them all to that point. Now these are all aligned correctly. So that's kind of a nice, uh, uh, a real nice thing as well. Hit the you know, T, uh, and uh, you can select and use the T key or the motion, the move T to move things as well uh, if you need to. So, in, in these vertices areas. So, another one that I like is uh, the dimensions tool. Again, you'll have to find it online, how to install it as a plugin, but I have it set up to the D key. 
So when I just click here and here, I'll be able to get, I can get instant dimensions. All these show up in this dimension style. I can select them all and hit the delete key and get, get rid of them. So I usually use it for temporary dimensions. Another good one, of course, is mirror, select an object. And I have shift V map to mirror. So I can just drag it, get them, you know, and get them mirrored. Shift A, zoom around. U for union. So now we got them boolean union. Um, another one I like is, uh, let's go to my object library and pull something out. Uh, let's do a... Uh, this edge connector right here. I'm going I'm to drop that right there. So this is my object library for my kit bash uh, and I've dropped it in there. It's called an edge connector. I can select it and I use shift H which is a 3D uh, a 3D scale tool. So I always the in between the middle of these two is an endpoint. That's an endpoint right there and I can take that and I always use that. When I scale that perfectly like this it'll all it'll be ready it'll be completely ready to be boolean. So once I'm done, I'm good. Uh, once I'm done moving it, I can select this and hit the boolean key. Go to hit my subtract uh, style over here. Right click and I'm done. And I just need to get, get rid of this and assign that color to that. I also uh, like to use C for chamfer. So instead of uh, fill it, I can say I can select these and say C and give me a chamfer distance and you can see I've got a chamfer so that's that works well um, anyway I hope this works uh, this helps some of you who have been asking about you know how do I move so fast and what is it that, that I'm uh, what actually am I doing I'll try and map these keys on in this actual YouTube video and uh, while it's not very structured this probably gives you one way of looking at how to use uh, an inter the interface on MOE Thanks a lot. See you.